Hi, I'm Shaquille O'Neal, and I'm the founder of Big Chicken. Google Calendar is my girlfriend. I don't know anything I'm doing unless I talk to my woman. Google Workspace, productivity and collaboration tools for all the ways you work. Stations is a new product built to support the day-to-day -day development needs of large and small development teams. It provides a customizable development environment available in seconds anywhere from a browser. We're here creating an environment for a workstation configuration. As you can see here, in a few seconds, you can define multiple configurations for, let's say, Node.js, a Java, or a Python environment. Once you create a configuration, this can be used as a template for cloud workstations used by other developers. Once the developer clicks on Start Workstation, what is happening behind the scenes is you're creating a VM dedicated for that developer, which can start fast because it can keep a pool of warmed up VMs pre-configured. Once they click on Launch, as expected, you get a code editor running on a VM. Developers and team leads can also preload the code repo, library, dependencies, ID extensions, and even customize the specific ID and code editor being used. Another thing you can see here is all the tools, such as the Java ID extensions or the JDK are pre-installed here. So you can just get to, into reading and writing code as soon as possible. And you can run your application too as well. So uh, the IDE will monitor for uh, what ports you're using on the remote machine, and it will suggest to forward the port and even forward the port and open the browser. So you can locally test your application. You can work with it and uh, navigate around your code. You can debug your code as well. takes full documents, including images, and translates them while preserving layouts and formatting, enabling researchers to share their findings with global audiences. Cloud Workstations is highly customizable, and the version I'm showing today has all the tools and compilers and everything I need, including the brand new Source Protect extension. Actually, right here, you can see that Source Protect has flagged a dependency with a known vulnerability. I can fix this right now on my workstation before anything is ever checked in. Now, Cloud Workstation is going to automatically detect those changes, and it's going to redeploy my app on my workstations as needed. This shortens my dev loop and makes me more productive. So in case you haven't noticed, Chronicle's URL syntax is very, very, very simple compared to other detection languages. Now we're going to go ahead and commit and push our changes. And we already have a GitHub action set up to auto-deploy these rules into our Chronicle instance. And by the way, Chronicle can be deployed as code, and it can scale across petabytes of data without needing infrastructure or human involvement. <coughs> Voila. OK, boom. So there's our new rule. And from this point on, it's going to start alerting when this malicious activity is identified. First, in the smart city example, we used a pre-built occupancy analytics model to detect and count vehicles. Now, if I want to do the same thing for bicycles, I can use a custom bicycle detection model in Vertex AI and easily import it into my computer vision application. Basically, if the model works in Vertex AI, then it will also work in Vertex AI Vision. Second, I want to use the power of BigQuery to combine video annotations with other information in my data warehouse. By the way, I can also store annotations in the included Vision Warehouse feature to easily search for insights across my video. By using Vertex AI Vision together with BigQuery, I can correlate traffic patterns with weather patterns or even make a forecast with BigQuery ML to predict future traffic patterns. Finally, I can use the SDK to access process video data and annotations and hook into a live stream of vehicle counts to power other applications or dashboards.
From the small to the big, meet the hardware behind the new Tensor Processing Unit, the TPU V4 platform. It's likely the world's fastest, largest, and most efficient machine learning supercomputer. This liquid-cooled board is a beast in both power and performance density. You see these pipes running across it, running chilled water over the board. They're there to ensure you extract the highest level of efficiency from this hardware. First, I'm going to build a no-code request approval app. And then I'll show you how my team and I can use this app to efficiently manage our development workflow, our approval workflow. With AppSheet, I have a single place to store my data and build my apps. I can also connect to other easy-to-use data sources like Sheets, or with the help of IT, I could connect to CloudDBs. Let me show you the solution that I could build as a business user. Here's my database. AppSheet helps me structure my data and prep it for app building. When I'm ready, I can create a new application with a single click. This creates a prototype app that will be usable on any desktop or mobile device. After some customization, here's what I've built. I have a new request view for users to make requests and an approval view for approvers to do their thing. Each of these views is available to me in mobile apps and desktop apps by default, and I can also configure them to show up in Gmail and chat, meeting my users where they are. Here's my automation that will send the approval view to the approvers in email. When I'm happy with my app, I can share it with my users, and I can add it to my chat spaces. That's a new technology we've been working on called Project Starline. It creates a 3D model of a person, making it feel like you're sitting with someone in the same room, not at the other end of a video call. After thousands of hours of testing in our own offices, including demos with enterprise partners, we are seeing promising results. Users noted the powerful ability to make eye contact and how much more engaged and connected they felt. And even with our recent partnership and collaboration with the Crossplane project, I can actually create and manage GKE clusters, AKS clusters, EKS clusters, provision and manage them all the same way from Google Cloud, which is pretty cool. Now here you might also start creating a multi-cloud mesh and say, look, I want to actually maintain services that run across clusters in different clouds. In this particular mesh, my web app is spread across GKE, EKS clusters, all of these different places, I'm actually able to manage those services and see them and connect them wherever they are. So today, I am excited to announce that Google Cloud Carbon Footprint, which helps you measure report and reduce your cloud carbon emissions is now generally available. Right from the Cloud Console, you can access the Carbon Footprint dashboard of your account. The underlying methodology is quite unique and is based on actual measurements of the energy used by machines in our data centers. 